Hi guys, this is Fiona from IELTS with Fiona and today we're talking about a really important topic. It's something that I covered in the monthly live Zoom meeting that we have in the Members Academy for all members and it was a question that came up and I wanted to address it. The question was, how do I deal with so much information about IELTS? And it was a, a student who felt very overwhelmed by the task of IELTS preparation. So I'm going to talk about that today in the podcast and give you maybe a different way of looking at things, I hope. And I'll also Re relate that to a few things that have happened recently that helped me see the problem of overwhelm in a bit of a clearer light. Overwhelm is a great word, I think. So the noun is uncountable. How do you deal with overwhelm as an adjective? I feel overwhelmed with information. And as an ing adjective, also the amount of information available is overwhelming, meaning it's just too much, too much information and you just can't cope with it. And you hear it a lot these days, I think. I think it's partly due to uh, the internet, I guess. There's just so much information out there. How, how do you know what you should do? Should you do everything? Who should you listen to? That kind of thing. It's, it's really overwhelming. And anyway, it affects us all. But I want to show you how it doesn't have to be that kind of all or nothing. I think when people say, I'm overwhelmed, it, it's a kind of signal that that's it, I've had enough. Uh, I do it all the time. You know, you say, oh, God, I can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. And it puts up barriers because you stop even taking small steps because you think, ah, oh, there's too much. I give up. And I think we've got to be really careful that we don't have that attitude or that word in our mind all the time, that we're overwhelmed so we can't do anything. It stops us from just taking those little steps. So I'm going to talk about that today. And I'm also going to relate it to a student recently I'd like to congratulate called Han. Han was just two months into the Members Academy. He started at a band four writing, but he ended up getting a six in just two months. And he did a writing test and he got a horrible question, basically. He worked really hard. He finished the course and he got my feedback. He was doing really well. I thought he was kind of band six, 6.5 on a good day of seven. But the test was last week and he said, oh my God, we got this question about describing a prehistoric tool. And it was awful. It was just an awful question. In fact, go and have a look at my daily tips. I've written a model. I'll do that in a separate podcast. But when he told me that he'd got this question, all kind of alarm bells went off. I thought, oh my God, that was just really bad luck that he got that. Then I started thinking more positively because I thought, well, it doesn't matter what the question is. If, you're, if your writing is okay, you know, if you've learned how to describe something in 150 words, you'll be okay. And it turns out he was okay. But anyway, he got a six, which is wonderful, overall 6.5. But the lesson I learned from that was this question hasn't come up for years, this idea of describing something weird like there's one about horses hooves can you believe it how they evolved and it, it used to be in the members academy as a lesson but I decided oh look that question doesn't come up anymore so I took it out of the academy why because I didn't want to overwhelm students with too much information and the minute you take something out or the minute you decide, oh, we don't need that, then it comes up. And that is the problem with IELTS. It's like, what is the opposite of too much information? And the opposite is not enough. And I think it's better to have too much than not enough when it comes to IELTS. 
And I'm going to explain that. I kind of feel like IELTS sometimes is throwing darts at a dartboard. The more you throw at it, the more things you'll hit. But if you only throw one dart, then you might miss. And I really feel for IELTS that it's really hard to say, oh, don't worry, just learn this. That's all you need. Because IELTS is not a subject, it's a skill. It's not possible to have too much information. I mean, I understand that forcing somebody to learn too many things too soon is stressful, but that doesn't mean that you can't provide everything that the student needs. So it's my job to break that up into bite-sized pieces, which is what I've done in the Members Academy. But... I, if I take anything out, then that's when there will be big gaps in your knowledge. So my way of dealing with it is to have all the information there and you decide how much you can manage according to your time and your level. And instead of trying to do everything at once, all you have to do is slow down and take your time. So I was talking about that awful task that I took out and now I've put it back in because then I know I can say, OK, it could come up in the exam and at least the students now will know, OK, I know how to describe something weird using the language that I have. So I feel better that it's there and I feel always better in the Members Academy that the materials you need are there. I don't expect you to do them all at once. And I'm going to try and explain how that applies in life as well. So the title of this session that we did in the Academy, it was called How to Deal with Information Overload. And I think the first thing you have to remind yourself is that there are always different levels of expertise. In, in life, there are always different levels of knowledge, skills and expertise. I'm going to give you a few examples so you can see what I mean. So when you do a degree in, in most education systems, most people will just do the bachelor's degree. So they'll choose a subject and just do a three-year degree in it. Now, that's my green level. I'm, I'm calling this a traffic-like system. So the green is the kind of general, everybody does a degree. If you're really interested in that subject, you'll, you'll do a master's degree. That's the yellow. So you'll become a bit more specialized. And what happens if you're really into that one subject, well, you'll do a PhD and you'll become an expert in that subject. So there are choices. You choose what you feel is best for you, depending on where you want to go with your qualification in life. So I did a, a bachelor's degree. I did French and English. I taught for a few years, realized I was really interested in it, and then I did a master's degree. But I didn't go and do a PhD. PhD, I've, I've helped lots of PhD students. To me, it looks like an absolute nightmare. So unless you're utterly, utterly devoted to that subject and want to study it, then stop at wherever you feel comfortable. And this traffic light system is very, very similar to the band system in IELTS. So let's say band six. Most people kind of need a band six or a 6.5, and that's okay. So it's called a survival level. You can survive in English if you've got band six. But if you want to study, you tend to need higher. You tend to need band seven, maybe 7.5 even to work. And then you might need, if you wanted to maybe teach IELTS or teach in English, you'd probably need more like a band eight and a band nine. So again, what do you need from IELTS? If you just need a band seven, then don't try and do everything. Just do what you need 
to get band seven. And that's how the Members Academy is organised. So it's organised into each lesson is, if you're just wanting the basics, you just do the video. If you want so band six, if you watch the video, that'll get you a band six. If you want band seven, do the video, do some practice. So all of the practice materials I provide, that will get you seven. Then I've got lots of other things, extra practice. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that extra practice. You don't have to click on all those links. You don't have to watch the TED Talks I recommend. But if you're aiming for a band eight, then it, this is what will get you to band eight. But you don't have to do that. I think students tend to think if it's there, they have to do it. But you don't. You've got to decide what do I want. And most people are happy with a six or a seven. And therefore, there's absolutely no reason to feel overwhelmed by IELTS. And I think it, it just applies to so many things like band five, you could just use Google, band six, do a course, band seven, do all my courses, I would recommend because they're all linked. And then band eight, you'd probably get a coach, wouldn't you? Or a, or a tutor if, if that's what you wanted. I, I told my students the difference between band six and band seven. Band six is you're interested. Band seven is you're committed. And band eight is you're obsessed. So only people aiming for band eight or band nine People obsessed who absolutely love English for the sake of the language, then do the extras. If you look at the, the general band descriptors, I don't mean the individual ones, but the general ones for IELTS, for a six, it says um, you can use and understand fairly complex language, particularly in familiar situations. So band six is a competent user, but it's in familiar situations, everyday situations. Band seven is called a good user. You can handle complex language well and understand detailed reasoning. So it's more in depth and you need it to study and work. What does it say for band eight and nine? So nine is an expert user. Your use of English is appropriate, accurate and fluent. You show complete understanding. So if you wanted to teach IELTS or teach English or become an examiner, then, then you'd need to be, well, band eight or band nine. But not everybody needs to do that. So be really clear about your goals. Now, let's just have a look at a few more levels in life. This has nothing to do with intelligence. It's just about where you want to be. So I'm a teacher. I put this on the band six line, the green. Lots of people become teachers. Band seven, you want to be a bit more specialised. You become a lecturer at university. It means that you're an expert in your subject. I'm not. I'm a teacher. I'm the green band nine. I'm the average teacher. Band seven, I would lecture in it. Band eight, possibly become a, a professor or, or write books. I, again, it's, it's a different level, a level that I don't want to, probably I couldn't because it's probably too difficult for me. And so I'm not going to aim to be a band eight, nine professor. And I'm happy with that. But then there are three levels of teaching qualifications. You might just do a CELTA, it's a certificate, it's called a survival course, just to make sure that you can survive in the classroom. Then after two years of teaching experience, you might do a DELTA, which is way more difficult actually. And then if you're really obsessed, like I was, you do the master's. That took me five years by distance learning, but it goes into teaching in a, in a much deeper level. The degree system in the UK. So a 2-2 basically means that you show up, you do the work and you can get a degree. 2-1, you do the work, but you do it well. To get a first class degree, let's say that's the band eight, band nine, you just do more work than everyone else. I think it's about 1% of all degrees are a first class. Now, I have to say I got a first class degree not because I was good, not 
because I was intelligent, but I did more work than everyone else because I was really boring. That's all. That's all. Nothing to do with intelligence. But this red level, getting a first class, is all about I read the books that the other people didn't read. I was I, I didn't know what else to do, so I studied. <laughs> and I was talking to my nephew who's at Oxford, and he studies about 12 hours a day. And I, I just said, why, why? You know, you're already at Oxford. Why are you, you doing this? And for him, he said, I don't want to be just at Oxford. I don't want to, which is the green. He goes to Oxford. I don't want to just get a degree from Oxford. That would be the yellow. He said, I want a first. I want a first from Oxford. And that's his decision. That's why he spends 12 hours a day studying. And this is mirrored. This is quite important. If you go to university, you, you read articles for your research. If you look at an average article, it's divided into three main parts. The first part is the abstract. It's called the abstract. It's really short and it's a summary of the whole article. Now, a lot of people I know don't read the whole article. They just read the abstract. If you're going for a first, then you've got the bibliography, the references at the end. Nobody reads these references, but I did. And my nephew at Oxford clicks on the references and reads that article. He, he reads all of them. He does not leave anything untouched. And the last thing I heard, he was getting like 82% scores in his tests because that's the amount of time he spends because that's what he wants. Doesn't mean that everybody is aiming for that or has to read all of those references. If you Google Bloom's taxonomy of learning, so Bloom, B-L-O-O-M, it's like a pyramid of different levels of learning. The pyramid, again, breaks up into our three levels. So at the bottom of the pyramid, it's like what most people do with learning. They remember facts, you know, that's what we do when we're at, school. we're at school. We just remember things. We learn lists. We memorize things. We repeat things. So that is kind of band five. Band six would be understand. So that means you can explain things because you understand them and you recognize them and you can discuss them. Then going to band seven, you apply and you analyze. So remember in IELTS writing task one, how important it is to analyze the data rather than just describe it. So analytical language gives you the seven and you're applying your understanding. Now, there's two at the top. There's evaluate and create is the highest one. So evaluate would be band eight. And it says this is when you argue, defend an opinion, support your opinion. We know how important that is for task two and critique things. So critical thinking is band eight. Then band nine is when you create and it says produce new or original work. So that's for people who understand the topic and then they write about it who, you know, authors, um, people who produce content. That is a band nine. Are you aiming for that? Are you aiming to write books in English? No. So don't stress about the optional extras. And then finally, this thing came up in my Twitter feed. It's, it's about the impact of reading for 20 minutes a day. And there are three levels. It's really fascinating. So a student at school who reads for only one minute a day is exposed to 8,000 words a year. And that puts them in the bottom 10% of, of the test results. Student who reads five minutes a day 
is exposed to almost 300,000 words a year. So just by doing five minutes rather than one minute immediately puts them into the the top 50%. So that's the middle, you know, kind of band six, band seven. And then the student who reads 20 minutes a day, just 20 minutes, is exposed to 1.8 million words a year, and it puts them in the top 10%. So that's your band nine, just by doing reading more than the other students. So they're not more intelligent. They're not more capable. They're not more advanced. They just read more. They do more. And it's not a huge amount more. It's just 20 minutes instead of one minute or five minutes. And that 20 minutes is your band nine in this in this situation. The, the impact of reading just a little bit more. So again, if you want to do just a little bit more, it's there for you in the academy if you want to aim for that just a little bit higher score. If you don't, don't do it. Don't get stressed by it. So to conclude, my other thought when the student says there's too much information, I keep clicking on different links and trying different things. I kind of think, well, does it matter in English if you click a link and it takes you to another reading task or another listening task or another video in English? So what? It's all English doesn't really matter. It's all improving your English. And the other thing I wanted to say is if you've ever downloaded my 28-day planner, you'll open it and you may go, oh my God, there is so much there. And lots of people have told me I should take that off my website because it's too overwhelming for students, right? So two things. One thing is I have tried to simplify that planner. In fact, if you go to November, you know, I, I do this free planner in my shop for each month. So if you go to November, you can get my November planner and it recommends that you just do one thing each day. So just reading one day, listening another day, writing another day. But if you actually just do one thing each day, then in one month, you'll only do four readings. And that's if you actually stick to the planner. Well, there's no way you can get a band seven with just doing four readings. It's just not possible. So that is the problem, is if you don't have too much, then you have not enough. And, and where is the ideal amount? I don't think anybody can tell you what the ideal amount is. Nobody can tell you, it, you know, do 300 reading words a day. It's not quantifiable. The, the ideal amount to, de, to do each day is what you can do in that day. And that is your choice of whether you're happy with what you're doing or if you feel you're not making progress, then you have to do more. There's, there's nothing magical about that, but there is no need to feel overwhelmed by it either. Just take a bit more time. That's all. And also, two quotes to finish. Just because it takes time, it doesn't mean that it's not happening. So. You can take as long as you want over it and you may think I'm not making any progress. I'm, I'm clicking here and I'm clicking there. I'm doing all of these things. I'm overwhelmed. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just because you're overwhelmed, it doesn't mean it's not happening. It probably is happening. And the other thing, I read this yesterday. This is just true for me, I think, maybe for you. It says you're not overwhelmed you're under-organized. And that summed up my life. You're not overwhelmed. I always say, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. Social media, marketing, blah, blah, blah. I'm not overwhelmed. I'm under-organized. And once you get organized, it's easier said than done. But once you've got a plan, like the 28-day plan, and you're doing something every day, then it's going to happen. Something will be happening. You'll be making progress even 
if you don't notice it straight away. Last thing, right, you can switch off now if you want. If you're tired, fine, switch off. I don't blame you. But this is one of my favourite stories. It's from Aesop's Fables. This one is about the farmer and he had three sons and the three sons were really lazy. So when the farmer was very old, he said to his sons before he dies, he says, look, there's treasure buried in that land on the farm. So please don't sell the farm, you know, because somewhere there is a huge treasure. And when he died, the three sons started, after doing nothing for years, they started digging the land over and looking for the treasure. But they couldn't find anything. However, when harvest time came, because they'd spent so much time digging and weeding and looking after the land to look for the treasure, they got the best harvest that they'd ever had. And they, they realized this was the treasure. This is what the father meant by a treasure. Doing the work, that's where the treasure will come from. In the Members Academy, there's lots of information dotted about but by working through it, you will find bit by bit that you are discovering the treasure. Some people, when they join, they go straight to the library and they say, I want to download all the PDFs. That, that's not going to help. It's only digging through the treasure that's going to help you see results little by little finding on a daily basis all the treasures that I've hidden for you, that will have its effect, I promise. Okay, thanks for listening today. It was a long one. And uh, do let me know if you've got any thoughts or any questions about it. Thank you for being one of my listeners. I appreciate you. And remember, you can get these live lessons in the Academy for, they're for anybody who buys anything from me, even if it's just a dollar download from my shop. Thanks for listening. Chat soon. Bye-bye.